Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the Break the Cycle website that you may be looking at. <clears throat> what I want to do in this brief video is introduce you to something you've probably never heard of before, which is inner family therapy. Inner family therapy is, in my judgment, a very effective way of reducing psychological wounds which most typical Americans, perhaps members of other countries as well, have. These wounds accrue from child, early childhood trauma. They are excessive shame, guilt, fear, trust problems, reality distortions, trouble bonding. Those are the wounds. Inner family therapy is a way to reduce these wounds permanently. Lesson one in this website tells you more about the wounds, where they come from, how to recognize them, how to assess them, in case you have some, which you probably do, and what to do about them. What I'd like to do here is outline quickly the process of inner family therapy. Family therapy, as you may know, gets human beings in a family together with a skilled leader and therapist who assesses why is the family under stress or not functioning well? Why are people angry or scared or depressed or arguing all the time? Finding out what causes that and then working skillfully to reduce the cause and replace that with harmony. That's one way of looking at family therapy. Inner family therapy does exactly the same thing. It starts by identifying who are the subselves that make up your personality. In my experience doing 19 years worth of inner family therapy as a professional, um, average people like you have somewhere between 18 and 35 different subselves. They are of three types, inner kids, very reactive, very rich in emotions, they know little of the world, guardian subselves who eternally watch out for the kids, soothe and protect the inner kids. That's all they do. There's quite a variety of them. The third group of subselves can be called managers who make your life decisions and cause your behavior when the inner kids and the guardians are quiet. Inner family therapy starts with getting to know, to list specifically, who are your subselves. It then says, assess whatever wounds you may have of these six wounds, pick a wound, and find out which subselves are causing this wound. Here's an example. Many people are burdened with what is popularly called low self-esteem, lack of self-confidence. That translates to excessive shame. They were taught at a very young age. You're no good, you're stupid, you're ugly, you'll never amount to anything, you're unlovable, who would like you? You're dumb. Little kids just absorb that because they haven't got the worldview to take it into perspective and make a, a, a judgment of it. So they absorb that and they think, okay, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm unlovable, I'm bad. Many people who are shame-based, who have low self-esteem, have little kids who still carry this childhood view. I'm unlovable, I'm no good. So family therapy seeks in a safe, patient, respectful way, identify the inner child or inner children who are carrying this outdated, distorted idea, I'm no good. Identify them. They may be two years old, developmentally, and they may be nine, they may be 17. You may have one inner child, you may have several. Identify him or her, get to know what she's like, where she lives. Does she live in the present? Usually not. Shamed inner children often live in the past. They still think it's the bad old days. Against all logic, all experience, they still think it's 1972 or 1984. <clears throat> you patiently find out where do they live in a creative way you invite them to come live in the present 
and then you connect them with your nurturer subself. I've never met somebody who did not have a talented manager subself whose specialty was nurturing in a loving, compassionate, empathic way, helping others to fill their needs. So you connect your shamed little child with your nurturer, often they've never met. You identify any guardians that don't trust your true self and you work with them patiently, creatively, to get to know the true self and to try out letting the true self guard the shamed child with the help of the nurturer. If guardians are willing to just try that out, they will find the true self plus your adult subself plus your nurturer and other skilled managers will in fact protect and nurture your shamed little child or for that matter your scared little child or your lost child or your abandoned child. Many of us have all of those if we came from a low nurturance childhood. So you work patiently to reorganize the dynamics and the roles, R-O-L-E-S, in your inner family over time. As you do that, your parts, your subselves, gradually come to trust the wisdom and skill of your managers, especially your wise, true self. As you free your true self to lead, guess what? Your psychological wounds dwindle. The quality of your life improves, your relationships improve, and perhaps your health improves. That's the purpose of inner family therapy. You can read much more about this in Lesson 1 of the website, the Break the Cycle website. The description of this video gives you a link to find out more about this. Um, I hope you are intrigued by this idea. Uh, it's not psychobabble, it's real. It really makes permanent changes in people's personalities who are ready to change. If they're not ready, it won't work. So I invite you to read more about this and to consider what would your life be like if you freed your excellent, talented, true self to guide you in all situations. Inner family therapy will, can help you do that. If you have any feedback on this concept on the web pages on Lesson 1, please use the link at the bottom of every page, contact. Send me your feedback, whatever it may be. If you want to contact me personally, that's possible also. I would love to hear from you. Um, I encourage you to, with an open mind, and adopt the stance of a student, patiently explore lesson one. Thanks for watching.